Okay, we made it to a sunset location at Ponta do Tristão, and just parked up the car and walking down a little mud path hopefully to get to a nice viewpoint, although I've already got a lovely view, down the coast of these epic, huge cliffs. And I'm not sure how far down this goes and how far down I want to go. So we've got about, let me just check my watch, an hour and 15 minutes until sunset. So I have a little bit of time to set up a composition where I want to go, what I want to take, Maybe if I can get a little ledge in the foreground somewhere so I can go and stand on it, that would be nice. But uh, yeah, T minus one hour until sunset and the sea spray that's coming up, or, or I don't know, it's just the moisture and the, the, the cloudiness coming over the different layers of the coastline as it gets smaller and smaller into the distance. It just looks amazing. I'm just taking a little video now which is 1.4 crop of my composition. I'll tell you what, I'll zoom out from 50 to about 35, 24. And you can see the full picture there. What makes this composition amazing is not just the grandeur of it and the fact that you can see that the small waves and you can kind of know how big a wave is. And then when that's compared to the size of the cliffs, it's just amazing. If I had a little person down there, that would be great, but I'm not walking all the way down there <laughs> right now. But I mean, if I had a little person, I'm not sure if you can see my finger because it's very bright down on this, this ridge, it'd be lovely. But it's just this repeating pattern in the composition, which makes, I, I think it makes it look amazing. And that's what you're kind of looking for sometimes is those repeating patterns, groups of things to, to, to make that image look more aesthetically pleasing. I'm really looking forward to the sun going down a bit further and getting out of my eyes. <clears throat> I've already got enough hair in my eyes, I don't need the sun in it as well. The position I've come to is below everybody else. Most of the people that come in to take photos are just going up there and haven't traipsed all the way down to this precarious cliff edge that I'm on now. But I think this is the furthest out I can get without falling into the sea. Uh, 250 meters so I'm a little bit nervous and holding on to everything even the crown jewels while I'm stood here but I wanted to get as far out as I could so I could get the best view down all of the different cliffs down there so fingers crossed this is gonna look epic so I'm now stuck between two minds of whether to keep the 24 to 70 on and include this big bit of foreground in the bottom and just crop it afterwards or put my 100 to 400 on I think ideally from this exact location I would probably want a focal length of 85 mil which is right bang in between the 70 to 100 that I don't have so yeah I think it might be a crop Kaz however has just left this area with a bottle of water and it's going to try and walk round and get onto the ridge down there. Okay so now I'm recording on the camera. This ledge at the bottom which is here, <laughs> you can see a very blurry finger there, um, she's going to go and try stand on top of it to give some perspective. At the moment the sun is lowering in the sky and providing some incredible backlight onto the mist that's coming up and separating these cliff edges out. <laughs> uh, when they say light is probably the most important thing that you want to try and look for and plan for in landscape photography, people aren't joking. Plan for the light, definitely. So Kaz has made it back from what was an epic trek. She's nodding all the way down onto this ridge. She was just about here. And I had the 100 to 400 on, <clears throat> zooming right in to try and get that perspective of a very small person in the very big cliffs. But you can see the clouds on the horizon just out here. They 
they sort of blocked the sun right as the clouds were lighting up as fire in the sky, which is really annoying. But <clears throat> I can blend some shots from a little bit earlier where the sun was out and backlighting all of the spray and, and the moisture coming up the cliffside with the ones with the nice sky. So I'll probably just take a few of these and, and, and mash them together to make that perfect landscape shot. And just about to pack up and go back to the car. And I'm not sure if you can see a little lighthouse right on the end here. I'll zoom into it in a second. It's just lit up and it looks fantastic. There's Kaz at the bottom there. And a big thanks to her for spending 20 minutes going down a precarious path to get to that position. Although I did find out that that was a little bit far away because as you can see here in the frame, she's right at the bottom and you can only just about see her. But I did have awesome light. But with this composition, maybe those clouds at the top are a bit too heavily contrasted and maybe the whole composition's a bit oversaturated. So I did this one, which is a little bit more simple. Kaz is uh, putting her hands in the air. She's slightly easier to see. And with that crop down, there's less distractions. Okay, so we made our way around a few kilometers around the coastline to some sea stacks. Uh, I think it's called Riberio do Janela. So we just stopped for an espresso at Janela and now starting to walk down towards the sea stack and the sun is out. I'm not sure if you can see all the way down there. That's the rock I was shooting the other side of about an hour ago and it's now all lit up. But maybe the sun is too bright now for that. Actually, the sea stack looks incredible. I've just come round the corner. Actually, let, me, let me do this again. Let me do this again, just to, so you can see what I just saw. All right, walk around and oh yes. Oh baby, that's incredible. All right, let's get the camera out and take some photos. Madeira being in the middle of the Atlantic and this place being on the north coast, you can get some really good swells and some great waves. So do take an ND filter if you're coming to this location. There is this little path at the top that you can go through and Kaz went up and took this little bit of B-roll and it's more of a tourist viewpoint. I would recommend actually going down to the beach where you just saw me and staying down there and using the rocks as a foreground, especially when they are wet so they cause a little bit of shine and they've got a nice deep black colour to them. Now ideally you want to be underneath the waves to try and shoot up at them to get a sense of scale of how big the waves are. This means going down quite close to the shore here using a low tripod, a wide angle and bending down which may cause you to have to censor your b-roll because let's say something could be showing. But using a six or three stop ND filter dependent on how bright it is you can get a shutter speed of anywhere between half a second and a second and really create some nice textures with the water. Take multiple shots so that you can blend them together afterwards. A word of caution when working next to the sea. Please don't be like me and not watch the waves because this can happen and salt water and electronics do not mix. I was extremely lucky that my camera survived. Just. So let's take a look at a couple of images. This first one, I've got the rocks in the foreground, some nice textures in the water and some great light on the sea stacks at Janela. Now the shutter speeds I got here were around 0.8 seconds. I blended a couple of images here and I got some of the movement of the water over the rocks. And it's all about having the shutter release ready and being patient and just waiting for the right moment. 
This second one is a blend of three photos and I wanted to get a little bit more movement. I don't have the rocks in the foreground for this, but what I do have is a big splash behind that rock. Some water coming off that rock, those nice white streams coming down and a lot of texture in the foreground. I quite like this, it's a bit more of a, a simple composition. Instead of vlogging most of the time I was on Pico Evo, I was messing around doing silly b-roll shots like this. But I had a great time walking up there, it is an incredible landscape. You are high above the clouds once you've left the car park, it's probably about a 40 minute to an hour walk up to the top. Lots of photo opportunities on the way like this path and this amazing tree. It's quite a famous tree. It's been photographed a lot by many famous photographers. I got there at sunset and the light had already gone behind the mountains to the right hand side. But I still did have some nice light on the background as you can see here in this particular photo. The composition is simple and what I wanted to make sure, and this is really important, is that none of the branches were crossing over onto the background, that the tree had all of the room to breathe at the top of the composition. But we made our way a bit further up to try and get sunset at the peak of Pico Ruivo. And this is a little picture of me above the clouds at sunset where there were some incredible colors in the sky and that nice little tree. Welcome to the top of Madeira. We have just walked all the way to the top of Pico Ruivo. And uh, it's not a long walk, but we're not terribly fit, I don't think. Um, and the sun's about to set in five or so minutes because we're trying to scope out some potential locations for sunrise, like the dead trees are halfway back down the mountain towards the car park but we've come up for the views and the tranquility. Take a look at this. This was one of the most incredible sunsets that I could, I could hope to have witnessed. The cloud inversion was incredible. The mountains coming up through that cloud inversion were, were amazing. The lights, oh my God, everything just came together there and it was so peaceful. Absolutely loved it. Now I would recommend having a long lens going up here because you can pick out details in the cloud inversion like this image here. I did take it with my 24 to 70, but it was heavily cropped. So I would have preferred to have actually taken this shot with my 100 to 400 to make sure I maintain some more of the detail in the image. But it is a nice and simple composition and the light's excellent. I also looked down and I could see all of these layers coming up through the clouds, the clouds giving the separation and extra atmosphere. But this image is a little boring and there's no scale context on this particular one. Now comparing the last image to this one, this one's a lot more balanced. I still have that cloudy layer atmosphere in the background but you can also see a house in the background, which gives it some scale. Also, I think this one's a lot more balanced. Now I'm gonna show you this tree again because on the way back down from the peak after sunset, I got a chance to do a small bit of Milky Way photography and boy, it didn't disappoint. Check these out. The one on the right, the tree there, fantastic. The Milky Way behind it. These aren't tracked and stacked. These are two images blended together, one for the sky and one for the foreground. On both, the sky is about a 20 second exposure. These are both taken at 20 mil. And the foreground is probably about two to three minutes to try and get as much light in as possible and as much detail. The one on the left, that beautiful path S-bend leading up the mountain up towards the Milky Way is just incredible. So if you're driving at night in Madeira, you've got to watch out for cows. I'm a bit stuck and these guys just will not move. <laughs> what are we going to do? Come on. Do I, do I, do I beep the horn? I don't know. 
Maybe just edge forward a bit. There we go. All right, we'll get moving. I really hope you enjoyed this video, learnt something about landscape photography, learnt some new locations where you can go take some great photos and also learnt that salt water doesn't mix with electronics and that cows can be dangerous on Madeira in the middle of the night. If you found this content useful and enjoy it, then please give me a like and subscribe. But until next time, happy snapping.